Hello friends, Ecovation brings you the newspaper editorial analysis of the Hindu newspaper of 29th April. If you are looking for the analysis of Indian Express, please find the link in the description below. If you are looking for analysis in Hindi, please again please find the link in the description below. I am Apoorv Mishra and these are my credentials. You can connect to me on my UPSC study group over the Ecovation app by clicking on this link. You can find it in the description below. You can mail me your queries and you can also connect to me over Facebook. So let us look at the first page of today's editorial. So the first article, this is about the Afghanistan policy of India. It is re relevant to your GS paper 2. Uh, effect of policies of developed countries on India's interests. So it is in the context of the uh, meeting which is about to happen between Indian PM Modi and uh, US President Donald Trump and uh, it is expected that in the meeting Donald Trump would demand more active involvement of India in Afghanistan. So uh, currently India is involved in just creating infrastructure and uh, passive support through training Afghan troops in India while Indian soldiers and Indian army is not actively present in Afghanistan but uh, uh, in a changed scenario it is expected that uh, a more active uh, involvement uh, where uh, Indian soldiers would actually be demanded to be on the ground in Afghanistan is highly likely and also defense equipment might be uh, asked to uh, be given to Afghanistan by India. These could have cost because as you know that when your soldiers are fighting a war which is not started by your country, it can create huge repercussions within the country as well as outside the country. So. Uh, <coughs> So uh, based on all this, uh, a question that could come is uh, what are the pros and cons of a more, act, a more active involvement of India in Afghanistan? Uh, so now coming up to the next article, this is uh, in the context of the impact of protectionist policies of different countries across the world on IT industry of India. Now this is relevant to your GS paper too. Uh, where again uh, the same uh, point of your syllabus effect of policies of developed countries on India's interests uh, the USA, the UK, the Singapore and Australia have recently laid out new visa rules or policies all of them are slightly protectionist and uh, prevent easy movement of Indian workers abroad uh, so this will impact Indian IT industry which employs 3.5 million people and which has a uh, which creates 100 billion dollars in export revenue so it is very critical to indian economy so now it industry is already facing challenges because the business growth is slowing down and uh, the rupee is strengthening which is uh, creating you know uh, which is bringing down the potential of uh, the competitiveness of the IT industry and uh, the cloud computing and big data are creating technological disruptions uh, with which the cost of uh, automated ser IT services is coming down and uh, India uh, and the labor uh, focused model which India uh, provides is becoming more and more irrelevant. So these are the challenges that the IT industry is already facing. And in that light, the visa rules which are coming out are creating further challenges. So what can the industry do? One thing is if it could rework its models where uh, doing uh, work on site is less required and work could be done off site from India only. If that could be done, that could be one thing. Apart from that, what the government could do from the policy perspective is that uh, the trade facilitation agreement in the WTO in, in services could be pushed by government more aggressively. So uh, what, uh, what are the likely questions which could be uh, uh, which could come up from all this development is that uh, uh, this could be the question that in the light of rising protectionist policies across the world it has bring up, become critical to bring down trade barrier in services through bilateral regional and multilateral trade agreements for India discuss. So, Try to create a, a simple answer for this kind of question. Now, uh, this article is uh, in context of Bhutan withdrawing from the BBIN agreement. 
uh, it is uh, relevant to your GS paper 2. The syllabus point is India and its neighbors relations. It is also relevant to the bilateral, regional and global agreements involving India, this particular syllabus point. So BBIN is uh, a connectivity agreement uh, involving Bhutan, Bangladesh, India and Nepal. It is a sub-regional agreement. So a regional agreement, SARC is a regional entity of South Asia and within that region there is the sub-regional agreement of BBIN. It is a connectivity agreement to facilitate trade between these countries. Uh, to allow trucks and other commercial vehicles to ply on each other's highways. So now uh, what has happened is Bhutan's parliament has refused to uh, ratify uh, this BBIN agreement because of ecological concerns that more trucks coming to Bhutan would lead to more air pollution and disrupt the ecology of the country. So <clears throat> now the questions which could be uh, which could come up from all this development is that first of all there is this uh, whole focus about sub-regionalism where because Pakistan keeps disrupting SARC and SARC works only on consensus so SARC has effectively become paralyzed so such agreements like BBIN which is called sub-regionalism and trans-regionalism where uh, countries from across the region like Southeast Asia are involved in a forum like BIMSTEC and uh, the question could be these sub-regionalism sub and trans-regionalism -region is the key to break the political stalemate of SARC. So you could be asked to discuss this and another as dimension could be that connectivity is the new global currency for growth and pro prosperity discussed. So you could be asked to discuss the importance of connectivity agreements in uh, changing the economies of, the con of, of countries across the globe. So this is this statement is the particular part of the article itself. So uh, you should uh, try to frame answers to these questions. Now uh, coming to the uh, this final article of this page. This is in the context of uh, Prime Minister announcing that uh, doctors it would be made manda mandatory for doctors to prescribe generic medicines. So this is relevant to your GS paper three science and tech part specifically issues related to IPR because the patents involving drugs is very important for, uh, for creating generic drugs. So first of all you should understand what is a generic medicine. So uh, there, uh, there are big companies, uh, pharmaceutical companies who do a lot of R&D and then create a drug. So they have a patent over that drug but after a certain period of time these drugs need to be made, uh, the chemical form formulation of these drugs need to be made pu public so that other companies could create, uh, you know, sim uh, similar gener generic medicines uh, uh, of the same chemical formulations. So when a lot of competitors enter in the field, the cost comes down and it, it makes accessible, uh, it makes uh, these drugs accessible to poor people this is important especially in con poor countries like India where health burden is very high and a cost of paying for health is very low. So now uh, what could be the issues Im that could emerge out when uh, such generic drugs could be made mandatory ma where doctors cannot prescribe uh, very expensive uh, commercial drugs or very expensive branded drugs. So <clears throat> the issue would be ensuring quality of generics over time and conditions. So uh, first of all you have to ensure that uh, the generic drug which is created by another country at low cost is of similar quality to the original drug. And the second thing could be that even when the drug is actually of original quality original, uh, but over, over a period of time it could degrade. Uh, uh, its stability could be low because of uh, you know uh, in government hospitals there is heat and uh, co uh, cool store cold storage is not there which could lead to breakdown of the if efficacy of drugs so ensuring all this would be a big challenge and uh, uh, this article quotes data uh, from government sources itself that 10 percent of drugs which were sourced from government various government sources they were not of sufficient quality nsq while 32% of drugs which were sourced from armed forces medical stores depot they were also uh, not of sufficient quality so this challenge is real this is not something which is hypothetical so one way of doing that which the article suggests is bioequivalence testing where uh, 
the drug uh, it and it is different from clinical trials so in clinical trials a very elaborate process of testing drugs on humans is being done uh, in bioequivalence testing the clinical trials has already been done by the company which ha who held the patent and now the new uh, uh, med uh, drug creators which are creating generic would just do bioequivalence testing where the similar formulation is given to healthy humans so <clears throat> One suggestion which this article gives is that uh, government could create a publicly accessible digital database of NSQ drugs. So this is quite possible given the thrust of digital India and given the expanding reach of smartphones and internet across the country. If such a database is created, so the users and the pharmacists could simply check whether the given uh, drug uh, by this given company is of uh, good quality or not so the possible question which could come out of this uh, all this article and this issue is that what do you understand by bioequivalence testing and how is it different from clinical trials the second question would could be simply what are generic medicines uh, so you you should know what exactly a generic medicine is and uh, what are it and actually even what are its uh, Im what is its importance for a country like india and finally, access the utility, feasibility and possible concerns of making it mandatory for doctors to prescribe generic medicines. So this was the first editorial page. The second page is, is a case study of uh, how a, a, a particular academic is managing drought through indigenous solutions in Karnataka. This is a very specific case study. And uh, I have gone through the article, it does not create any uh, great value while it is con uh, connected to your syllabus point, but it does not generate any real value for you. So you could simply go through it quickly, go through this article, don't waste much time on it and you could even skip it if you are running short on time. So this was the analysis of the Hindu of editorials of today. If you thought the video was good, you please like it. If you think that it could be beneficial to your friends, please share it over uh, share it over Facebook and WhatsApp. And if you want to get these videos every day, subscribe this channel. If you want more discussions on these topics, and if you want free mock tests relevant uh, for your UPSC prelims and mains, and if you want analysis of all this by me, you can join my study group on Ecovation by clicking this link in description. Thank you very much.